AARP's Create the Good video series about the All of Us research program. My name is Dr. Randy Bloom, and I have been privileged to work alongside both organizations. As a participant ambassador, I've had the opportunity to share information with people across the country about the value of this research project and how it can benefit people for the uh, current health and the future. Today, we're talking with Alyssa Kotler, Director of Communications and Marketing for All of Us and learning about this long-term research initiative. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Please let's start by telling our viewers what is the All of Us Research Program. Sure. The All of Us Research Program is a very ambitious effort to gather health information from a million or more people throughout the country from every walk of life. People share information about their lifestyle. Uh, they provide um, uh, samples of their blood, urine, or saliva. Um, and they agree to share their electronic health records. And all of this information is gathered into a big database, big data resource. The samples are sent to the biggest biobank of its kind at the Mayo Clinic. Um, and all of this information is then available for researchers to answer any number of research questions so that we may advance our efforts to get toward more precise delivery of healthcare in the future. Thank you. This program is uh, developed and coordinated through the National Institute of Health, right? That's correct. Please explain that organization. Sure. The National Institutes of Health is a U.S. federal agency underneath the um, Department of Health and Human Services, and uh, it is the largest funder of biomedical research in the world. Can you please tell us some more about yourself? Sure. So um, I am very privileged to be the Director of Communications at the All of Us Research program. Um, I've been at NIH uh, for a very long time, <laughs> uh, for almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I, uh, health communications has always been a, a passion of mine. Um, health advocacy has always been something that drives me. You mentioned your personal health story as having a very big impact on your decision to both participate in the All of Us Research Program, but also your interest in working on the program. Please tell us. Sure. So um, I lost my mom very young. She was uh, 40 years old. She had been diagnosed with breast cancer in her 30s. She passed away when I was 13. Um, and so I knew then, early on, that there could be some kind of hereditary factor. This, but this was so many years ago, we didn't know anything. Um, and when I was about 19, um, I felt my first breast lump. And so I went to the doctor for the first time, and for the first time for this. And, um, you know, everything was fine, um, but it sort of put me on a path of understanding that I was at higher risk. And so over the years, I had, I had you know, more and more of these types of false alarms. Um, and one of them did show that I had uh, a high-risk marker. Um, by this time, I was starting to start my own family. And so I waited until I finished uh, nursing my babies and you know, finished having, having children, and I went and got genetic testing. Um, and I was tested for the BRCA1 and 2 uh, genes and the, the variants that are there. Um, and I was negative for everything. And so I decided, based on that information, knowing I was high risk, but knowing that I did not have this genetic predisposition, mm -hmm. Um, that I would not take the most uh, sort of uh, extreme step of having prophylactic surgery, but I would go on tamoxifen, which is what we know to be the gold standard um, to prevent breast cancer. Um, but 18 months later, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, and so, you know, it was, it was very frustrating to me to feel like I had done all of the right things. I had, uh, you know lived a healthy lifestyle, I was running marathons, I breastfed my babies, I took tamoxifen, I did all the right things. Um, but I still was diagnosed. And so I went to my first oncology appointment and I asked my doctor, you know, what happened here? And she said, well, maybe you're one of the few people who don't metabolize tamoxifen. Or maybe it slowed it down, but we don't know. And I felt like at this point, we should know. <laughs> <laughs> and I should have, if I had known then that I wasn't going to respond to tamoxifen, I would have made a different decision. And 
So then my daughter, who was about eight or nine at the time, very precocious, um, said, Mom, your mother was diagnosed with breast cancer, and now you've been diagnosed with breast cancer. Does that mean that I'm going to get diagnosed with breast cancer? And all I could do was say to her, you know, I have to hope that by the time we get to that, get to that place of worry, that we'll have more answers to that question. And what we can do in the meantime is do everything we know we can do and keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best. And so when I got the phone call to work on this program, it was, uh, it, it, it was like angel singing, that this is an opportunity for me to try to gather more information that probably won't help me in the short term or even in the midterm, but maybe it'll provide more information so my daughters can make more informed decisions um, about their health care as they get older. Very special story. One in a million. <laughs> you know, recruiting or um, obtaining a million volunteers is no small feat. How do you get the word out? So we do lots and lots of different types of communications activities. Uh, it's very important to us that we reach people from every walk of life, from every part of the country, um, and that includes people who have not been represented in research in the past. So we have to use a variety of strategies and tactics to, to reach people. But I think one of the most important things that we do is that we work with trusted organizations like AARP uh, to really get input about how the program is designed, uh, how it's being implemented, what are some of our messages, um, and how do we reach people. Um, and so these organizations have been extremely vital to us to, to um, make sure that we're doing things in, in the right way. Um, and then they also are trusted, uh, they're trusted uh, brokers with their communities. And so they are helping us get the word out to the, to the people who they work with most closely. Um, so it's been really a very important effort for us to be working with different organizations and individuals um, around the country. We also have a mobile uh, exhibit and uh, education um, vehicle that goes around the country. Um, and so it can go where people are, regardless of whether they're close to a health center or not, so that they can learn more about the program and sometimes even enroll in the, pro in the program right then and there. Very exciting. What are the benefits for people to enroll to volunteer for this long-term research program? This is an opportunity for people to really become engaged in their own health uh, and to share that information with the research community so that we could advance uh, the delivery of healthcare in the future. Um, some people may find uh, that they are that they have a, a personal story to tell, that they have a personal reason why they want to help advance uh, research. Um, I have my personal story, which I'd be happy to, to share a little bit more. Um, but thinking about how their information could help answer questions about their community, about their family, about their own health uh, is important to a lot of people. For some people, it's the, the act of volunteering. Um, it's to give back, uh, you know, so that others might benefit in the future. Um, some people are really interested in getting some more information back about themselves. And as the program is further along, we will be providing information to people um, as, as it's learned about their own health care. So we talk about this program as long-term research. What does that mean? So we ask people to join the program and to be involved, actively engaged for 10 years or more. Uh, we hope it's more. Uh, because the more information that we can gather over a longer period of time, um, the more uh, meaningful, impactful the information will be for research. Then if it is this long-term research, would you say that some people should consider themselves too old to begin to join now? No, not at all. Um, we really are interested in understanding health across the lifespan. And so we want to understand who is more likely to develop certain diseases, who is more likely to stay healthy as they age, uh, what, what are the factors that go into finding out, you know, who, what, what hap you know, why some people stay healthy and, and why some people get sick. Um, so it's, it's very important that we have people um, across all age groups joining the program and sharing their information. 
So what could you say would an individual actually gain personally from joining the program, from sharing their health information? Uh, some people feel that they're giving, uh, giving to their legacy, that this is, this is something that they can share and uh, improve the future of health for their children, for their grandchildren, for their community. Uh, some people are participating so that they can ultimately learn more information about themselves and potentially what conditions they might be um, at more risk for. Uh, are there lifestyle factors that they might consider uh, modifying so that they can live a healthier life as well? So they will be pro uh, providing their health information through surveys that they might be asked to take, through offering their blood samples that will be tested. They will receive this information back. Can you explain that a little further? Sure. This is actually quite a unique aspect of the All of Us Research Program. Uh, most, most research efforts do not provide information back to participants, and we're committed to making sure that we're able to do that in a very responsible way. So in particular, some people are worried about sharing genetic information um, and how they would receive that information back. The program is actually engaging with the genetic counseling service so that if people uh, are receiving information back that could be um, concerning to them, um, that they're receiving it in the context of a counseling session. Um, and again, this is something that has not been uh, done in this way before. So I'm very proud of and very excited about, about that aspect. People receive information about the, just the survey questions that they answer and how does that compare to other people within the program. Um, and a lot of people find this very, very interesting to see you know, if they're answering certain questions a certain way, um, how, how other people are answering that. Um, we also recently just opened up our public data browser, and this is the first opportunity for people to get an understanding of the type of information we've gathered in the program uh, with our participants. Um, so it includes the, the survey questions that people have answered, um, as well as information from electronic health records. And all of this information is anonymized. There's no personal, personal identifiers attached to it, um, and you can't drill down to an individual to, to figure out what somebody may have answered. It's all uh, gathered together uh, and delivered back um, in, in a large way, in an aggregate way. Um, so you can see how many people are in the program who have certain diseases or fall into certain age groups or uh, have in, in certain uh, race and ethnicities. Let me ask, um, there are people who have been historically underrepresented in healthcare research. Uh, why is it important for them to join and to participate you know, with their information in all of us? Yeah. Well, the fact is that much of the healthcare that we have today is based on research with mostly white men, frankly. Um, and so, as, so, the, so the treatments that we have um, don't always give us the information to know if they're going to be effective for everybody. And so the only way that we can have assurance that people are going to uh, have the right, more precise treatment for them is if they participate in research. And so this is an opportunity. Many people who, uh, who have not participated in research um, have, have felt that, they, that their communities have not been represented. Um, and they feel in some ways uh, not counted and invisible. This is an opportunity to stand up and be counted. We know that terrible events have happened sometimes in history uh, in certain populations of medical research. How can we tell people that their information will be handled ethically in this program? Absolutely. Um, we are very, very uh, aware and uh, understand all of the um, terrible things that have happened in the past. We don't shy away from that at all. Um, and we know that many, um, many things came from, from those uh, terrible events that have helped to ensure ethics in research moving forward. Um, and we do feel very strongly about the core values we've built around this program, that we are going to treat participants as partners, uh, that we are going to be transparent, we're going to protect their privacy, and we're going to ensure that the, that the information is used for, for research uh, and to help advance health in the future. Um, and so 
there are regulations in place now also on top of that, which help ensure that uh, information is used in a more ethical manner and that people who participate in research uh, are fully informed um, about the research that's being, that's being done and what they're being asked to do. Uh, but what we have found uh, and what the literature has shown also is that many people don't participate in research today because they simply haven't been asked. Mm -hmm. They have not been invited. And so we are inviting, we are asking people to please join us, become our partner, and help us mm -hmm. advance research for everybody moving forward. How can you say that we are protecting their information, their privacy, or their uh, security? How are we doing that in this program? Sure. So, uh, as you can imagine, uh, protecting the, the very private information that people share with us uh, is absolutely vital to ensuring that we maintain trust with our participants. And so we, we work very, very hard. There are many uh, security features in place as well as privacy protections uh, in place. When people provide their information, their, uh, any identifiable information is, is uh, decoupled from their information uh, so that it's impossible to find out who answered which, which questions in which way. Uh, only very few people at our data research center would be able to make those connections. Um, as research is conducted in the future with the health information that's provided, the researchers who will have to apply for access and they'll have to abide by a code of conduct um, to ensure that they are respectful of the privacy of the participants. Um, and again, there are federal regulations in place to ensure uh, the privacy and confidentiality of our participants. Thanks, Alyssa, for a great conversation. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.